In this video, I'm gonna share my best travel tips for Thailand that I wish I knew before coming here. These tips would have saved me a lot of time, money and headaches, so let's get right into it. Number one, get a local SIM card. Instead of going with some expensive travel package that your mobile provider is offering you, you can just take out your SIM card and get a new one. It's both cheap and very easy to set up. You just gotta make sure that your phone is unlocked and you're good to go. For this trip, I got a one month plan with unlimited 4G for less than 30 bucks, and you can set it up right as you arrive at the airport. Number two, Download Line. This is the app that all the locals use to communicate, and it is by far the most popular messenger app here in Thailand. I would suggest you to download Line before you travel to Thailand, and most importantly, before you change SIM cards, because when you set up the app for the first time, you have to verify through SMS, and you don't wanna do that with a random Thai phone number that you just got with your new SIM card, because you can't change your number later, unless you make a new account, but then you lose all your contacts. A lot of local businesses are active on this app as well, so it's great if you want to order some products or make a reservation of some sort. To give you an example, my favorite massage bot in Bangkok only allows customers to make a reservation in advance through Line, so there's definitely some cases where this app will be highly convenient for you. Number three, bring a travel adapter. Thailand's power outlets is not the same as in many other parts of the world, like in Europe and Northern America. And although your plugs can fit in most of the power outlets here in Thailand, it might not be compatible with the voltage here. Make sure to check if your devices are dual voltage, because otherwise you could seriously damage them, and that's when you need a travel adapter. I got to learn that the hard way a couple of years ago. I plugged one of my cameras, and yeah, it didn't work after that. Number four, bolt and grab. Taxis are really affordable here in Thailand, but to avoid any tourist prices and unnecessary negotiations, you can go ahead and download Bolt and Grab. These two apps are like the equivalent to Uber here, and they're operating pretty much all over the country. Be aware though, because in some parts of Thailand, Bolt and Grab drivers are banned from entering certain areas. I had this problem at the Phuket airport. You know, you had big signs everywhere stating that Bolt and Grab is banned, but all you need to do is meet the drivers a little bit outside these pickup points, and you'll be good. Number five, 7 Eleven is your best friend. Very soon you'll notice that there's a 7 Eleven on pretty much every block you go to, and that's because there's over 12 thousand stores operating here in Thailand. 7-Eleven in Thailand is very different compared to what it is in the US and Europe. Because here in Thailand, it's like a pharmacy, grocery, and liquor store all in one. And the best thing about it is that it's very affordable. I don't think I go a day without visiting a 7-Eleven here in Thailand, whether it's for a snack, some drinks, or some food. And honestly, guys, you have to try the toasties. They're like a dollar each, and they're fire. Number six, eat the street food. I remember the first time I traveled to Thailand and I went the entire trip without trying out any of the street food just because I was afraid of getting sick. Looking back at it now, that was just me missing out on a great experience because street food can definitely be done safely. Try to find the food that looks fresh and has been prepared right in front of you because then you know the food hasn't just been sitting there for hours. Also follow the locals and eat where they eat because if you see them at a certain place, that just means they didn't get sick the first time because otherwise they wouldn't be coming back. So so don't be afraid of trying it out. Number seven, cash is king here. Yes, hotels, department stores, international chain stores and so on do accept credit cards, but there's a lot of small shops as well as street food vendors that won't accept cards. So go and exchange on Thai bot because it'll come in handy. And tip number eight, break down your bills. As soon as you take out cash from an ATM, you'll only get the big bills, right? And the problem with that is not everyone is willing to break like a thousand baht for you simply because they don't have change for that. So what I would suggest is just to try to break down your bills as much as possible. I think the best way to go about it is just to go to any 7-Eleven and buy something small because trust me, you'll be here a lot. Number nine, avoiding scams. In Thailand, there will be a lot of people who's gonna try to take advantage of you simply because you're a foreigner with money. Thai people are super friendly in general, but don't let that get the best of you. When someone comes up to you and asks you where you're going, where you're from, and how long you've been in Thailand for, I'm sorry to break it to you, but they don't ask that to be nice. They're just trying to figure out if they can rip you off or not. Generally, I just ignore these people, but if they really get in your way, just tell them that you're living in Thailand, because then they know they won't be able to pull any tricks on you. Most people here are genuinely nice though, and some of them will approach you simply because they're curious. I had these two ladies coming up to me, asking me about is making YouTube videos and then they subscribe to the channel which you should also do if you're enjoying this video so far. Number 10 domestic flights. Flying domestically in Thailand is actually very affordable and a direct flight from let's say Bangkok to Phuket can cost as low as $20. A little bit extra if you have checked luggage of course but my point here is that taking these flights is definitely one of the most time and cost efficient way of traveling here. Trust me I've been on the other side of this. I remember taking the train from Bangkok all the way down to Surat in the south and from 
there taking two separate buses to finally get to Phuket. I might have saved myself a few dollars, but that trip took me like 20 hours in total, and it was a complete nightmare. So unless you're on a really tight budget, save yourself the headache and get up on a flight. It's definitely worth it. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button because it really helps me out. And if you want to see more, you can check out this video right here. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.